Can you retire this crypto? Yes, but not with a simple buy and hold strategy. You need something a little bit more advanced. So I've been using this strategy for a couple of years. It has already produced some nice results for me and probably in five, 10 years, I'll be able to retire. It's a combination of several asset class and you probably never heard this from other crypto YouTubers. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel, it the blocks, I teach blockchain technology. So if you are a newbie to crypto, you're probably thinking that you will just buy some Bitcoin and you wait a few years and hopefully it goes to $1 million and then you sell your Bitcoin and you're rich and that's it. You can uh, have holiday until the rest of your life. Well, that's a beautiful plan on the paper, but unfortunately for most people, it doesn't work out this way because it doesn't take into consideration risk. You know, it's very easy when you look at a trading chart to think, oh yeah, I would have bought here and I would have sold here. But actually when you are invested, when you own the assets, you know, you're always not sure if you're at the peak. So that's why you can miss the peak. You can sell before, you can sell after. So really for most people with this simple strategy of just buying and holding, it doesn't quite work out. So another strategy that I've heard from another crypto YouTuber is to do staking on Ethereum. So on Ethereum 2.0, the consensus algorithm from the blockchain is going to change. And so miners in the future, so that will be called validators. And in order to add block to the blockchain, they will need to stake some ethers. So basically they will lock the ether for a certain period of time. And if they do their job properly, they will be paid a certain amount. So currently that's about 10% of your ether stake, but it keeps going down as more and more people stake their ether and it will bottom out at about 5%. So on the paper, when you look at the strategy, you say, okay, well invest money to at 10% and then retire uh, from the interest payment from that, it seems pretty nice, but there is there are two problems. First of all, is that this interest rate is not constant. As I said, now it's 10%, but it's going to go down to 5%. And second, you keep your exposure on Ethereum. So if tomorrow Ethereum is not doing well, that means the dollar value of the interest you're going to get from your staking operation is going to go become really bad. So you don't want this, you know, if you retire, you want to depend on, you want something that is stable. You don't want to be exposed to something that is variable. So that's why I don't think that staking uh, on Ethereum 2.0 is a good plan for really retiring. So now the question is, what's the plan to retire with crypto? So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing for myself. So I think that you need a fundamental skill, a really a hard skill in blockchain if you really want to take advantage of this industry so that you can be hired for a blockchain company. So I always recommend to learn blockchain development because you can learn, you can get a really nice job paid $100,000 a year and even more with a lot of remote opportunity. So it's not easy in the sense that, yes, you need to make some effort in order to acquire the skill of blockchain developers. So that's one kind of pain. But if you refuse this pain, then that means you're not going to get any skills that make you really stand out in the market. And it's going to be harder for you to really uh, have a, a good income. So it's going to be another kind of pain. So really, you have to see it in terms of what kind of pain uh, would you rather have? You want to have the pain of not finding a good job, being constantly in bad financial financial situation or the pain of learning something hard. But once you have it, then you're good. So I recommend to learn this skill. It's also possible to work other kind of job in the blockchain industry. You can do a community, you can be a community manager, you can work in market marketing, other stuff. So you don't have to be technical, but the best and the highest paid job in general, they are the the job for developers. So that's why I recommend this. So that's the basis. You have your income, $100,000 per per year. I was, I was about to say per, per month. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Not to this point. So $100,000 per year. And so every month you're going to have all a new cash flow to invest. So you shouldn't just leave this in the bank because you want to build wealth that can produce income in the future so that you can retire. So here is how you're going to invest your income. So you're going to invest a part of it in crypto. 
but not all of it, not even the majority. That's the mistake of most people. They invest too much because they are impatient. If you invest too much, you're going to become very emotional. And as soon as the market moves, then you're going to do some, take some bad decision, maybe sell too early or like put yourself in really bad situations. You don't want to do this. You want to invest so that Every, you don't have to check the price of ether every day. You just maintain your cool, you're, you're fine. If it goes up, it goes fine. If it goes up, goes down, it doesn't really matter. So invest roughly uh, maybe 10 to 20%. I mean, personally, I'm pretty conservative. And so the way I would invest is in Bitcoin and in ether, because really these are the two main cryptocurrencies. So you have two different ways to invest. One way would be to do dollar cost averaging DCA. So in this investment method, you're going to invest the same amount every month. So the benefit of this method is that you don't try to time the market. It's extremely difficult to time the market. Actually, most people can do it. So with DCA, you have your allocation of money and every month you invest the same amount of money in your crypto. So that means when the market goes down, since you are investing the same amount of the same dollar amount, you're going to buy more of the crypto. And so you're going to get more crypto when it's cheap. And when the market goes up, you're going to get less crypto because you don't move the dollar amount. So that means that on average, you buy your crypto at a better price and you keep doing this for months and months. And, and, uh, and that's the, with this strategy, you're supposed to do well. So there is an alternative if you're a little bit willing to take more risk. So if you use options to get some exposure to crypto with a small amount of capital, you can get a really large exposure to crypto. So there are some options for Bitcoin. There aren't options for Ether or maybe, maybe in DeFi. If you do some research, maybe you'll find some option for for ether in DeFi, but not in centralized exchange but probably it's going to come this year and so with this strategy in place if the crypto market really explode well you're going to benefit from it but on the other hand if it crashes it also it's also not going to impact you too significantly because this is only going to be 10 to 20 percent of your investment so you can still recover so for the remaining of my cash flow, what I would do is put a good chunk of it in stocks, maybe something like 20, 30 percent in stocks. So once again, you can use this strategy I explained you before dollar cost averaging. So you buy the same amount of stock every month. There is something else you need to look at. It's called Buggleheads three fund portfolio. So that basically tells you you need to uh, allocate your portfolio, your stock portfolio in US stock, international stock and bonds. They are supposed to be not strongly correlated. So, uh, that's the, the best way to make a nice return on the stock market. This strategy has performed really well in the past decade is how most people invest on in the stock market, actually. And so you will invest very simply for each category. You will just invest in uh, an index. So uh, to get exposure to an index, you can buy an ETF. So you find some ETF from, for US market, for international market, for, for bonds. And so you invest in this every month. And maybe once a year you do a rebalancing because the share of uh, the stocks, the US stocks versus international stock versus bonds will have changed. So you need to do some rebalancing to keep uh, the weight constant. And for the remaining of your cash flows, of course, uh, some of it will be for eating, for your rent, everything, but still you're going to get a really a good chunk. So pretty much for the majority of it, like 30 or 40 percent, I actually keep it in cash until I have enough money to invest in real estate. So I'm pretty sure most of you must be super surprised. What the hell, Julian, real estate? Come on, we're crypto, we're crypto guys, we, we don't invest in real estate. OK, so you have to understand that millennials uh, people of my generation have really bad ideas, wrong ideas about real estate, and they're missing out a lot. So first of all, most people of my generation, they think that real estate is overvalued, should never invest in it. So uh, yes and no, it's overvalued in downtown of big cities like Paris, London, New York, etc. But in the suburbs or in other city, you can still find, find deals that are, that are pretty decent. Second, even though it's overvalued, uh, it's probably going to stay that way for a, a very long time. 
And one thing also that people uh, of my generation don't really understand is the leverage you get with real estate. So you can just with a small deposit, you can get a huge loan. And this is going to really increase a lot your return on investment. And that's something that you cannot get on stocks or on bonds. Like try to go to your banker and uh, try to convince him to give you a loan to invest in the stock of the bank even that the the banker will refuse to to do it so that's why i think really there is this huge opportunity in real estate and real estate it's something that gives you wealth so that means there is a utility in itself even if the price of real estate drops in the future still there is a utility somebody is still willing to pay you some money to live inside your apartment so uh, I don't I don't really care actually if the if the market crash as long as someone is is willing to pay me the rent that's that's fine. So here is the plan. So you uh, every month you save a, a big portion of your salary in cash to to invest in real estate. Once you have enough for a deposit, so it can be a 10, 20, 30 percent. It, it's up to you to see. Uh, how much leverage you want you invest in some real estate like a, a small apartment you you take a loan and basically you structure the operation so that the you're you're not cash flow negative that means your rental income should cover the reimbursement of the loan every month so that it's not a financial burden so it's very very important to do this also, if you want to maximize your rate of return on your investment, it's better to take small properties that give you a higher rate of return. Another trick you can use is to buy property that are all that need some renovation because you will be able to buy the property at a much cheaper price. And even when you add the cost of renovation, it might still be cheaper than a brand new property. And also you can offset the cost in some i mean in my country france it's possible probably there are similar regulation in other country do some research but it's, it's probable so in my country it's possible to offset the cost of uh, renovation against the future tax that you have to pay for your the rental income so in if and pl also you can offset uh the depreciation that means every year we consider that the value of the property goes down so you can offset it from the tax you owe from your re rental income. There are different ways basically to, to cancel the tax you owe for the next uh, 10, 15 years from your rental income. So that one more thing that will boost the, the yield. So at the end, that will basically make the, the real estate a, a really, really great investment. And so if you do your operation well, in 10 years, your property is paid. And so now you enjoy the full cash flow of the rental income. It's going to be 700 bucks, 1000 bucks. So of course, this is not enough to retire. But if you repeat the operation a couple of times, so maybe uh, every, I don't know, every two years, you buy a, a new property because you save enough money for the deposit. Little by little, you build your wealth. And when it comes to your stock portfolio and your crypto portfolio, when you make a big gain, then you sell your position and you reinvest it in real estate and you get richer and richer. So you really see how we can combine different asset class to really build a system that works. But everything depends on your capacity to generate cash. And you do this by having a high paid job. And so I recommend to become a blockchain developer because this is a sure option in this industry. And of course, on my channel, you'll find a lot of tutorials to become a blockchain developer. So how can you make the process even faster? Because by using the method I told you, maybe you will need uh, to wait something like 10 years before you can retire. But potentially you can make it happen faster if you make the money engine stronger. So once you're a blockchain developer, you can specialize even more, for example, in solidity, in, in security. So to get even, even a higher paying job, you can become an entrepreneur in blockchain, create your own DeFi project. But what I really want you to remember from this video is that you need to have this strong foundation of a really a core skill that you can sell at a high price. And then based on the cash flow that derived from this activity, then you can reinvest this money in different asset classes. But it's really important that you control your risk. So I have a question for you. How much money do you need to make every month passively in order to consider yourself retired? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm super curious. Bye.